everyone, Ashley Mayu here, joined by Mike Beard to discuss DRF's race of the day this Sunday, and it's a good one. It is the first leg of the Canadian Triple Crown, the million dollar Kings plate at a mile and a quarter on the Tapita up at Woodbine. And Mike, let's take a look at this slate. It's actually going to go over two pages here. What a field this year with 17 horses in the main body with those two also eligibles. Yeah, it's it's just a it's a huge field. I guess as it should be. This is the major race for for three year olds uh, that are that were foaled in Canada. So, I mean, everybody's in here to take a shot. There are some horses who it feels like they're probably just reaching a little bit in this field. I thought Ashley, but man, there's also some quality in here. Obviously, in a field like this with so many horses leaving the gate at the same time, trips going to be very very important in this race. And you get a little bit of everything here in the main body with those 17. You have a couple horses that um, have experience in the United States. You have Chad Brown's runner, and here is the morning line favorite, the sixth Calic. You also have some of the Phillies coming out of the Woodbine Oaks that ran well. So I feel like there's a, a lot to look at, a lot to dive into. Don't forget with this being the Sunday race of the day, if you click or scan the QR code with your mobile device, you do get free past performances for this race. So, uh, Mike, let's just dive right into this first. But before we get into, I guess, the field, let's look at the t- time form pace projections here which they're expecting a fast pace here maybe the 13 paramount prince from what we've seen from him so far he's been forwardly placed but as well as the 15 and 16 from those outer posts yeah I, it feels like this pace certainly has a chance to really heat up you got to figure a lot of these horses especially the ones drawn outside we'll be trying to race forward here to get into some kind of position um, we'll see if paramount prince can make the lead this time he did just wire the uh, the prep for this race, uh, the play trial in his most recent start. He didn't have to go that fast that day. He's going to have to go a lot faster here, it seems like. Certainly, and the distance will be the the big question that all these horses have to answer going to a mile and a quarter. But let's kick it off here with the number one, Stanley House. I wanted to take a look at actually his graduation victory at Gulfstream Park. With sort of the surface uh, at Gulfstream also having Tapita there. I thought he looked pretty good here. He had the outside draw. He's gonna really going to kick home nicely in here. Javier Castellano was aboard for this and is back aboard him in the Kings Plate. Yeah, just found it really hard to, to knock this horse. Um, I think he drew well down towards the inside here. You know, we'll see if he gets into any trouble at all with all these horses crossing over on him. But at least he's going to get to save some ground. I, I thought he was good as a two-year-old. I think he's really improved since they stretched him out this year. And I just I wouldn't be too hard on him for that plate trial last time where he was sort of a non-factor as the favorite. I just didn't think he got a good trip at all in that race um, and never really had a fair chance. I agree. I mean, he was shuffled back early on and that's something he really hadn't faced throughout his career. But overall, he still sort of ran his race, just wasn't good enough from that sort of trip. The two is one of the Phillies in the field, Elysian Field. This one trained by Mark Cassie. We'll take a look at her Woodbine Oaks score. Uh, You know, looking at the Phillies and how they've been able to perform in the Kings plate over the year, they've had a lot of success. And I thought the trip that she got here, she really had to work for it turning wide, but uh, she kicked home really nicely. Yeah, you make a good point, though. You don't really have to worry too much about Phillies, you know, switching over to try uh, the Queen's plate. They've had some real success in this race, and maybe Elysian Field will be another one um, who has success here. I mean, I thought she looked good at winning this race. Um, I-, I would just say that it's the really the first fast race that she's ever run, and she'll probably have to run faster if she's going to win the Queen's plate. There was also a pretty strong and contested pace in front of her last time. Maybe she'll get a similar setup and a clean run into it. I thought she might have to improve again, however. The three, Philip, my dear, a little bit of an outsider in here, one for Kevin Attard in the field. They've decided to make the equipment change for the big race, putting blinkers on. Most recently, sort of split that field in the plate trial. Yeah, I don't know how much I, I liked his his performance in, in the plate trial. It was only his second start off the layoff, so maybe he's just one of these horses that's sort of working his way uh, back into condition here. I don't know. I didn't think he ran that well. His other two races on this surface – they're fine, I guess. They don't do a lot for me. It seems like at least at this point, he might be a better turf horse. And maybe just a little sharper as a two-year-old. Sometimes the tr- transition to three takes a little bit, and um, he's needed more in his two starts so far. The four Twin City is also a little bit of an outsider in here, who I thought raced pretty well in the plate trial overall, finished third, beaten by five lengths, and started off the season with a really nice win in the King Corey. Yeah, I think we kind of maybe look at him the same way. I mean, I, I don't think it's fair to say that he was going to win the plate trial with a better trip, but I didn't think things worked perfectly for him there. It took him a while to get clear um, in the final furlong there. And once he did get clear, I thought he ran on pretty well in that race. Maybe it was an underrated performance like you. 
I thought he ran pretty well in his three-year-old debut to win going seven for a longs. The sticking point, I guess, is the race two back when they ran him in the grade three Marine. He was terrible in that race. I'm not sure what his excuse was, but his other races, I think they're pretty good. I thought he was a live long shot in here. The five more stashy. First off the claim, blinkers on for the new connection. Just that one lone win under his belt. You have to go pretty far back to find it late in his two-year-old campaign. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on him. He seems a bit of a deep closer, but also a horse that's kind of just grinding for those minor pieces is going to need to step up. Yeah, it just does, it just seems like he's in way over his head in this race as they step him up and try the the king's plate off the claim here for forty thousand. I mean, so far he hasn't run a race that's going to put him even close in a field like this one. Um, he's going to be a huge price if you like him. I couldn't get there. And he's working well, but as you said, this is uh, these, these are some deeper waters. Now, curious to get your thoughts on the six Calic for Chad Brown. Uh, we're going to look at that race two back where this one was able to win pretty nicely in gate to wire fashion in that grade two event at Belmont. He got to the front here. It seems like, you know, he was able to set fractions to his liking and just kick on home. Yeah, he had it. He had all the best of it here. He didn't really take any pressure on the lead. He does stay stay on pretty strongly through the stretch here, and he's never really threatened by some good horses at the end. I don't know, man. He, he kind of took advantage in here. This is his third consecutive win, however. I don't think you worry about distance necessarily with him either. I think the real question is, you know, do you really want to take a short price on this horse um, as he ships up to Canada and switches surfaces to try the the all weather for the first time? It's not like he's going to be some kind of great price, even if you think he might possibly be the best horse. No, I think you bring up a great point. You don't know about the surface, but between Chad Brown being the trainer and Kazushi Kimura booked to ride, we both know uh, basically anywhere they take their show, they are bet heavily because they do well. But uh, I think the the surface is, is a big question in, um, you know, the mile and a quarter last time out, the Belmont Derby, just things didn't go his way. He likes to be forwardly placed. So I completely agree with what you say about that horse as the favorite. Now, the seven Velocitor, a little bit of an outsider in here, a horse that did pretty well as a two-year-old, but this year is yet to hit the board. Yeah, I, I thought he was pretty tough to make a case for. Um, we'll see if maybe the trip just really works out for him here, because if nothing else, maybe he could just fall into a good spot. He has tactical speed, but he doesn't need the lead. To be effective i was just really disappointed in his in his two most recent starts he was terrible in the marine after getting up close to the pace um at a pace that wasn't actually that fast and i just thought he had a great trip in the plate trial last time and wasn't good enough the eight wickenheiser another fill in here by lemon drop kid now we saw her finish second in the replay we showed earlier behind elysian field but i wanted to take a look at the race two back Thought it was a pretty good performance considering it was her first start of the year, and she's going to face uh, more seasoned fillies and mares in this spot. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is not this is not a bad performance at all, and she's only going to be second best at the end. But you see her there, sort of over behind horses for a long way through the stretch. She's only clear here in the last hundred yards or so. Um, I thought she ran pretty well in, in this race, and at least if nothing else, it shows that she can hold her own against Colts. She'll be back in against Colts in this race. You know, last time that would by notes again, there was a strong pace in front of her. She had a lot of ground to make up, though, and I thought she was running on really gamely at the end. The nine silent miracle. This one out of the John Matini barn was a winner last out to pick up that third career victory and start number five. Finally made the lead in a race where maybe the pace wasn't the hottest, and this one just got the the luck in the race, I guess. Yeah, maybe she just had the best, or he just had the best trip last time. I don't know. It, it, it was a step in the right direction. I'll give him credit for that. He has won three of his last four starts, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with with those kind of, with his, with his running lines recently. He is a horse, though, who two starts back with him against Stanley House. I, I don't know about you. I didn't see his excuse in that race, and he was a, a complete non-factor. Yeah, I completely agree. Non-factor and one of his lower buyer speed figures in his career. He really regressed from what we saw in his first start of the year and then that more recent start. Now, the 10 Midnight in Malibu, this one out of the Citatard Barn. When he's on his best game, he's really been able to put in those two nice performances and one of which was last him out at the mile and a 16th up at Woodbine. Yeah, it makes him a little bit of a tough call, I guess, because he, he just feels like he's a little bit inconsistent, um, if nothing else. He's very lightly raced, though. I, I actually really liked his maiden win. Uh, last December, the first time they stretched him out, he didn't break that great in that race. He took a little bit of a shuffle early on, but he just made this early wide move around the turn. He took the race over um, and he stayed on, you know, pretty, pretty nicely at the end of that race to just get up. His first two starts this year weren't great. I thought he had an excuse for the first one, not really an excuse for the second one. 
Um, but I just thought it really took a step forward last time. I mean, this horse made a run from way too far away, I thought. I thought he went way too early in that race. He took over. He was getting tired at the end, but he still managed to hang on. He was the longest shot on the board in that race, but he didn't look like it in the running. I think there's some talent here. He just might get totally overlooked in this race and be some kind of big price. I'm not sure that he can't contend in a race like this. Interesting. Also, Adam Biscuits is going to climb aboard him for the first time. He's only gone up to Woodbine a handful of times, and he's two for two there now this year. The 11 touch and rides a horse in here that has some of the least experience just with those two races under his belt was third on debut on the turf. But let's take a look at his graduation score last time out. I'm curious to get your thoughts, Mike. I'm not sure he really faced much in this field, but the way he's going to cruise home here, uh, I thought visually it was pretty nice to see this performance. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's a very visually impressive performance. And it's also a very fast race with a 91 buyer speed figure, which it just kind of feels like if he can show up in this race, stretch out to a mile and a quarter and run another 91, he's going to be really, really hard to beat. You're right, though. It's hard to evaluate exactly what he was beating. The horse that he flew by in the stretch there was an odds on favorite, but he's only run twice in his career. So, you know, who knows how good that horse is. I just I like everything about this horse. I thought he was good in his first start. I thought he was really impressive winning last time. Um, he's got the pedigree to handle this stretch out in distance. The question is, what kind of price will he be? I think the 12-1 winning line is very fair. Um, can he handle the, the rise in class and the longer distance of this race? Those are the main questions. Yeah, and you pointed out his pedigree by Candy Ride out of a Nikon mare. We know how much success Nikon had up in Canada. So, um, you know, I, I think he's got the makings as well to get the distance. Now, the 12 cool kiss. 30 to 1 on the morning line. We'll take a look at the plate trial. We've talked about it a little bit, and I just thought looking at the replay from the last out, we know the winner, Paramount Prince, excuse me, is the number three in here. Uh, looking at Cool Kiss, the number 11 um, starts to open up on the field here, but I still thought Cool Kiss was pretty game and, and didn't have the trip. I mean, really, it was far back early on. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, there's there's a way to look at this race and feel like maybe he just kind of took the worst of it when all when all is said and done because he just couldn't get over from his outside post. He was wide around the track, widest uh, down the lane there. He stayed on really nicely. I thought it was a step in the right direction. I still question whether he's good enough to beat a field like this one. The 13 Paramount Prince we just saw was the winner of the plate trial and was able to take them gate to wire, which... He was able to do on debut, but since then he hadn't been able to do that. And he was able to do it once again on that stretch out, which I think was pretty impressive. And we saw with those time form pace, uh, pace projections, he could get, you know, towards the front here early on. Yeah, I mean, I guess he just, you could say he improved the first time they stretched him out last time um, to, to win that race. He beat several of these horses um, in that plate trial effort. So those are all positives. Can he make the lead in this race? I think it's going to be a lot tougher I mean, I thought he ran fine last time. I also thought he had the best trip in the race. The number 14 two-way crossing, Roger Atfield teaming up with Antonio Gallardo, a winner last out. They finally decided to put this one back on the Tabita, maybe to see if they had some, uh, you know, King's Plate future plans in place and was able to win after being pretty far back early on. I like that he improved a little bit to win uh, on the surface switch last time. I was, I, I don't think he ran well enough to be a contender in a race like this one. I was also maybe a little bit, maybe I'm, you know, reading too much into it. I'm a little bit turned up that he was in for the 40,000 that day. He just happened not to be claimed. Um, and now they just, you know, I think they're just taking a shot in this race for a, obviously a very, very good trainer. The 15, Coco Kaipu, this one under the Tedston Holder Barn. We'll take a look at the grade three Marine last out. Was a uh, game in the stretch, but just denied here in the end by Turf King. Ends up finishing second. You can see number four here. Can't miss this one, the gray. Yeah, feels like maybe he did, the trips made the difference here. The source made a nice run around the outside. He has a short lead. The winner, who is the favorite in the race, just going to get through on the rail and I'll kick him at the end. I thought this was a good performance uh, first time on the stretch, and I really liked his win two starts back in the Queensland. I thought he ran really well that day. I'm concerned that he might not want to go this far. I really like his last couple of races, though. Yeah, and a lot of them, as you've mentioned, they've been at the 7 ace distance, but hard to knock on his resume alone. I know he's only got those two wins, and it's typically a runner-up, but if you're looking at the exotics here, maybe one to consider. The 16, El Cojete, this one out of the Mike DiPaolo barn, Joined the barn for the first time in that last start back on July 30th. Uh, was the pace setter in there, but tired to finish third. 
yeah, I didn't love that that performance last time. The pace wasn't that fast. He didn't really, in my opinion, didn't really have much of an excuse to have to settle for third that day. He's very lightly raced. He's got a little bit of speed. Maybe he'll really improve in this race. I think he's going to have to. Then rounding out the main body of the field is the number 17 at Moon Landing. Blinkers on for this other Kevin Attard trainee who was third last out stretching out in distance and really um, doesn't have too many starts up at Woodbine, but it was nice to see him. It looks like he proved a, bit, a little bit last time out. Yeah, it feels like that was probably the best race he's ever run. Um, I didn't like his his uh, first start up here at Woodbine two back in that Queenston. He was favored that day. He was terrible in that race. He ran a little bit better last time, but um, another race where I didn't think he had much of an excuse, and he just wasn't good enough. And then I have to ask you, Mike, uh, any thoughts, you know, in case there are scratches on either of the also eligibles, the 18, Enjoy the Silent, or the 19, Runaway Charlie? Well, I thought it was hard to get behind either of those horses if they managed to get into this race. Certainly the, the 18 feels like he has more of a chance than the 19 does. I don't think I'd mm -hmm. bet on either one of them, though. All right. Well, that's the field for this year's edition of the King's Plate. It's a stacked field. I think there's a lot of directions to go. And Mike, I'm going to let you kick it off here. You go with a horse that's 30 to 1 on the morning line, the number 10 midnight in Malibu. But when you talked about him, I could tell um, you're really in interested in him. Yeah, it's just, to me, this was just one of those races where I didn't want to settle for a short price. We'll see how it all plays out as far as the wagering goes. I felt like Midnight in Malibu had to be some kind of big price in this race. And I just feel like there's a chance he's quite a bit better than he looks on paper. So I'm just going to take a shot with this horse and hope he works out the right kind of trip in here. I wanted to pick the 11, touch and ride on top. I'll wait and see what kind of price he is. I went with the number one, Stanley House. I liked the performance at Gulfstream Park. I also liked the win two back at Woodbine. And I thought, as we discussed, the trip just didn't work for him last time out. So hopefully he's able to save some ground and hopefully not get pinched back pretty far at the start as well. I know he's got a lot of time to recover going a mile and a quarter, but I don't want to see anything close to the plate trial trip because I don't think that's going to work for him. So I went one fifteen eight six. I'll be honest. I think underneath, I'm sure you agree, probably six or seven horses you could use. You went 10, 11, 15, four. Yeah, you don't want to, I don't think you want to spread yourself too thin in this race. It feels like anything can happen underneath. Um, we'll see how these favorites do. I was against them, but I won't be surprised when I'm wrong. Don't forget, this is Deer F's race of the day this Sunday, the million dollar Kings plate up at Woodbine. It goes as their 10th race on their stacked card. Best of luck.